Hi there, it's Tracy here, the self-proclaimed humorous tutor, and the terrible joke she's come up with today is, what do you call a topical cream used to treat arthritis? That's right, it's jointment, because like it's an ointment for joints. Anyway, that was my segue into the topic for today, which is joints. And we're going to talk about how to classify joints and some examples of each. And so there are two main ways that we can use to classify joints. First, we can classify based on function or the range of motion that it allows. And the next type, we can classify joints based on its structure. And so this includes the material that it's made out of or how it's arranged in space. And so let's talk about the first type of classification, which is based on function first. And so there are three main um, subcategories for this. The first of which is syn arthroses. So the prefix syn is Greek for together. And then arth refers to joints, which is Latin. And so these types of joints are so together that it's immovable in the sense that, for example, in the skull and the sutures that join the cranial bones, they're so together, they're practically one, and so they're not going to allow very much, if any, range of motion. The other example are the teeth, which are embedded in the maxilla and the mandible, and so you probably don't want them to be moving either. And so skull sutures and teeth within the facial bones are examples of syn arthrotic joints. Now, the next one in green there are amphiarthrotic joints. Amphi meaning both. And so I think like amphibians, amphi, they can live on both land and water. So amphi meaning both. And so both in the sense here that they're both immovable and also movable. And so what that means is just in the middle, amphiarthrotic joints allow a slight level of movement. And examples of this include the distal tibial fibula joint and also the pubic symphysis. And the last type of classification based on function are diarthrotic joints or diarthroses. And so dia meaning completely. So I think like diagnosis. And so a diagnosis is a complete understanding of a condition. And so of an individual's condition, sorry. And so completely in the sense that it's full movement. It can completely move in any way we want it to. And so we've got examples being the elbow, the shoulder, and the ankle. Now the next type of um, joint classification was we said based on structure. So I'm just going to quickly draw like a color key whereby blue means that those joints are synarthrotic, no movement, green, amphiarthrotic, slight movement, and orange, diarthrotic for complete movement. And I've now conveniently cropped out the blue one, so that's cool. There are three main types of structural classification for joints, and under which there'll be be subcategories as well. So the first type is a fibrous um, joint, and that's made out of thick connective tissue. And under the subheading of fibrous joints, there are going to be three types of fibrous joints. So first of all, we have sutures, which are found... um, between the cranial bones, so say the sutures of the skull, and sutures meaning join or literally to sew together, and so our cranial bones are very, very much together. And we've also got gomphoses, and so gompho meaning nail or bolt, and we're talking here the joint between the teeth and the mandible or the maxilla. And so you can envision how the teeth are really nailed in or bolted into um, the bones there. And notice how sutures and gomphoses are both blue, which I've yep, cropped out of the color code. And so we've got both sutures and gomphoses are synarthrotic joints. They do not allow movement. And the last type in green there are syndesmoses. Now, syndesmoses um, are amphiarthrotic joints, so they allow a tiny bit of motion. And syndes, or or syndian means literally to bind together. And so in syndesmotic joints, there are ligaments that hold together the joint very tightly, but will still allow a small range of movement. And so, for example, that'll be that distal tibial fibula joint. Okay, so that was fibrous joints, underneath which we had three types, sutures, gomphoses, and syndesmoses, and they either allowed no movement or the tiniest bit. 
Now, the next type of structural joint classification are the cartilaginous joints. And in the name, cartilaginous joints are whereby a piece of cartilage is going to unite two bits of bone. Now, under cartilaginous joints, there are two main subcategories of which. The first one is a synchondroses. And notice again in blue, so synchondroses, if you're classifying, classifying by structure, it's a cartilaginous joint. If you're classifying by function, it's going to be a synarthrotic joint. And so syn, remember meaning together, chondro refers to cartilage, and whereby cartilage puts two bones together in such a way that it's not going to allow movement. And a prime example of this is the first costochondral joint. Costo, referring to ribs, and chondral, remember, referring to cartilage. And so that's the bit of cartilage that's going to join the first rib to the sternum. No movement. And in green, the next type of cartilaginous joint is a symphysis. And so symphysis literally means to grow together and a bit lame, but I kind of remember like a symphony whereby like music and an orchestra grows together and forms a wonderful masterpiece. You don't have to you don't have to go with that one. You can ignore that I just said that. Anyway, so we've got the next type of cartilaginous joint. Note how it's in green. So this will allow a slight bit of movement. And examples of this include the pubic symphysis, whereby the two pubis bones grow together um, and then are joined by that bit of fibrocartilage. And also um, our intervertebral discs. And so our synchondroses are primary cartilaginous joints composed of hyaline cartilage, while symphysis um, is our next type of cartilaginous joint, which is made out of fibrocartilage. And so we had our hyaline cartilage in our synchondroses, allowing no movement, and fibrocartilage cartilage, um, is compressible, which means it's going to allow a slight amount of movement in our symphysis joints. And our last type of structural classification for joints are our synovial joints. Synovial referring to the synovial fluid. And so all synovial joints will um, be encapsulated within which that capsule, the synovial fluid, will flow. And also the heads of the bones will typically have articular cartilages as well. Okay, so there are six main types of synovial joints. So let's go through them quickly. We've got firstly, we've got the gliding joints. And so gliding joints are going to allow movement along a single plane. And so gliding along that plane. Examples include the carpals and the tarsals found in the wrists and the ankles. The next type of synovial joint is a hinge joint. And so hinge joints allow movement on a single axis. And so just so we don't confuse plane and axis and gliding and hinge joints, a plane, kind of like what I've drawn there, is that transverse plane. So gliding joints will allow movement anywhere along that plane, whereas an axis, so we've got the X, Y, and Z axis, for example, um, as per a graph. And so um, hinge joints are going to allow movement on one of those axes. So we're talking movements like flexion and extension, whereby we're only moving it along that one axis. So examples of hinge joints include the elbow joint, where specifically we're talking about the joint between the humerus and the ulna, whereby the olecranon process is going to hook around um, the hinge, which is the trochlea, and so we get that flexion and extension there. The next type of synovial joint is a pivot joint. So that's going to allow for rotational movement or basically just spinning right? And so we've got examples being between C1 and C2, whereby we have C1 uh, rotating and spinning around the dens of the axis to shake our head as, it, as if we were shaking our head in a no motion. And also the radio ulna joint, whereby the radius crosses over the ulna, and that's going to allow for pronation and supination. And the next type of synovial joint are condyloid joints. And so condyloid joints allow for circular motions as well as flexion and extension. And so a prime example of a condyloid joint is found at the wrist, the joint between the carpals and the radius, whereby you can flex and extend and also roll your wrist around. Okay, so the next and second to last type of synovial joint is a saddle joint whereby a saddle joint is going to allow for flexion, extension, and other movements. However, 
you cannot get any form of rotation on a saddle joint. Okay, so the best example of this is the thumb, whereby, think about it, if you can um, pull your thumb towards your palm, and you can also pull your thumb backwards, however, the thumb can never rotate about its own axis. So a saddle joint can be found between the first metacarpal and the um, carpal of that region, which is the trapezium. And the last type of synovial joint is the classic ball and socket joint, whereby the ball is the head of the long bone typically and the socket um, found in the girdle. And so these are going to be our shoulder and hip joint, which allow for motion, uh, sorry, movement along any axis. So you can flex, extend, abduct, adduct, um, roll it around, pending, pending how good you are um, at the splits, but that'll be your uh, ball and socket joints. Okay, so here's a big overview of everything we've just gone through. So there are two main ways to classify joints based on either its function or its structure. And so underneath function, you have three types of joints based on whether it's immovable, slightly movable, or full movement. And in structure, we can base it on... Um, well, it's structure. I don't know where I was going with that one. And so we had three types under there. We had our fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial joints, each with its own subheadings. So I was always a bit confused about, oh, like, well, is it a synovial joint or is it a diarthrotic joint? It's both. So synovial joints are synovial in the sense that they are surrounded by a capsule and have synovial fluid. But if you're classifying it based on how much motion it can provide, then it's a diarthrotic joint because it is a fully movable joint. And so separating the classification of joints based on function and structure and remembering that every single joint will have both classifications, whether it be on function or structure, helped me a lot. And I hope this table helped you guys as well um, get, some, get a bit of clarity around how to describe or classify these joints. So thank you very much. I hope that helped and we will see you next time.